The late Eartha Kitt may have only stood five feet four inches tall, weighed about a buck zero five, and was famously known as the sex kitten, who seduced Santa with her words in her song, Santa Baby, and later seduced Eddie Murphy in Boomerang. But let's not forget that she was also a very dedicated and outspoken social activist. Eartha Kitt has left an indelible mark on entertainment, but behind the glitz and glamour lies a story of triumph, tragedy, and the lasting legacy of a true Hollywood icon. Despite her success, she faced setbacks including legal battles and property disputes after her death. All the details you need are right in this video. Let's dive right in. Eartha Kitt was a remarkable American singer, actress, dancer, and activist. Known for her sultry voice, captivating performances, and outspoken personality, she was born on January 17, 1927, in North South Carolina, but her exact birthplace remains uncertain due to conflicting records. Her mother was of African American and Cherokee descent, while her father was believed to be of German descent. Kit faced a difficult childhood. Her mother, Annie Mae Keith, was only 14 years old when she gave birth to Eartha, who was of mixed race heritage which made life challenging in the racially segregated South. Eartha never knew her biological father and her mother's relationship with her was strained. She was sent to live with relatives in Harlem, New York, where she endured hardship and discrimination. Eartha Kitt did not live with her mother, Anna May, for an extended period of time. Anna May despised Kitt because of her lighter skin while the rest of the world despised the future star because of her dark past, with some Cherokee roots too. Obviously, the combination of isolation and alienation alienated the youngster. It didn't help that Anna Mae had had a troubled adolescence herself, for which she bore the scars. Regardless, when Anna Mae settled with a new romantic partner, she abandoned Kit. The young girl was sent to live with her Aunt Rosa, and unfortunately, this extended family was no less abusive to her. To earn her keep, Kit was forced to pick cotton for them, even though she was less than seven years old. Around this time, Anna May fell ill. Kit later claimed that her mother was probably poisoned, and Kit was brought to her for a final visit, whereupon she watched her die. Growing up, Kit discovered her talent for performing and started singing and dancing at a young age. She attended the New York School of Performing Arts, where she further honed her skills. Despite facing racial prejudice, she persevered and began her career as a dancer in the Catherine Dunham Company, touring Europe with the troupe in the late 1940s. Eartha Kitt's breakthrough came when she was discovered by Orson Welles, who cast her in his production of Foss in 1950. Her performance attracted attention, leading to appearances in films and on Broadway. She gained widespread recognition for her seductive rendition of Santa Baby in 1953, which became one of her signature songs. Following her success in Foss, Kit began appearing in films and on Broadway. She showcased her talents in movies like New Faces, 1954, and St. Louis Blues, 1958 and Anna Lucasta, 1958. Her performances received praise, solidifying her reputation as a versatile and captivating performer. Kit's seductive voice and unique style propelled her music career to new heights. Her rendition of Santa Baby in 1953 became an instant classic and remains a holiday favorite to this day. She released numerous albums and singles, earning accolades for her distinctive sound and captivating performances. Kit's talents transcended borders, leading to international acclaim. She toured extensively around the world, captivating audiences with her mesmerizing stage presence and captivating performances. Her appeal was not limited to the United States, as she gained fans across Europe, Asia, and beyond. Throughout her career, Kit took on iconic roles both on stage and screen. She starred in the Broadway production of Timbuktu 
in 1978, earning a Tony Award nomination for her performance. Additionally, she voiced the character of Yasma in Disney's animated film The Emperor's New Groove 2000, further cementing her status as a beloved cultural figure. Throughout her career, Eartha Kitt defied societal norms and expectations, embracing her uniqueness and refusing to be confined to any one label or stereotype. She earned acclaim for her performances in films such as St. Louis Blues, 1958, and Anna Lucasta, 1958, as well as on stage in productions like New Faces of 1952 and Timbuktu. Her distinctive voice, coupled with her magnetic stage presence, made her a stand-up performer in various mediums. Aside from her artistic endeavors, Kit was also a vocal advocate for civil rights and social justice. She was outspoken about racial inequality and injustice, often using her platform to address these issues. Her activism sometimes led to controversy, particularly during the 1960s, when she criticized the Vietnam War and was subsequently blacklisted by the U.S. government. Eartha Kitt had a diverse and prolific career in television shows and movies, spanning several decades. Here are some notable roles she portrayed. Anna Lucasta, 1958. Kit starred in this drama film as Anna Lucasta, a young woman who was forced into prostitution but later seeks redemption and a better life. Her performance earned critical acclaim and further established her as a versatile actress. Boomerang, 1947. In this crime drama film, directed by Ilya Kazan, Kit portrayed Angela, a seductive nightclub singer caught in a web of corruption and murder. Her performance in a supporting role added depth to the movie's narrative, The Mark of the Hawk, 1957. Kit appeared in this drama film set in colonial Africa, starring alongside Sidney Poitier. She played the role of Renee, a local woman who becomes involved in the struggle for independence. Her performance highlighted her ability to convey complex emotions and motivations. The Emperor's New Groove 2000 In this animated Disney film, Kit provided the voice for the character Yasma, an eccentric and villainous advisor to the Emperor. Her voice work received praise for its comedic timing and distinctiveness, making Yasma one of the most memorable characters in the film. Batman 1967-1968 Kit makes television history when she became the first African-American actress to portray the iconic comic book character Catwoman. In the third season of the original Batman series, her portrayal brought a unique charm and sensuality to the role, earning her a dedicated fan following. I Spy 1966 Kit guest starred in an episode of this popular espionage television series, playing the role of Rosie, a glamorous nightclub singer caught up in an international intrigue. Her performance added intrigue and sophistication to the episode's plot. The versatile performer, Eartha Kitt, met real estate investor John William MacDonald on June 9, 1960. Their daughter, Kit MacDonald, was born on November 26, 1961, and was cherished in the Catholic faith at a blessed Sacrament Catholic Church. McDonald had met Eartha Kitt through a mutual friend, Bob Dix, after his study at the University of Southern California. Despite the racial barriers of the time, they formed a deep connection. However, their marriage largely suffered due to McDonald's addiction and Kitt's demanding career. Eartha successfully juggled her career and motherhood, often taking her daughter on tours while McDonald stayed home. Shapira is the daughter of Eartha, whose mother was black and Cherokee, and whose father was white, and John William McDonald, who was German and Irish. She shared a TikTok titled, I am my mother, Eartha Kitt's biological child, in July to address those who assert that Eartha couldn't have given birth to her and she must have been adopted because she has fair skin and blonde hair. Shapiro told Hall 
that she decided to speak publicly about people questioning her biological parentage because it happens more often than one would realize. She explained that this conversation comes up a lot on social media now that her mother has passed away, which prompted Hall to ask whether Hertha was worried about outsiders asserting Shapiro wasn't her daughter. Fortunately, Hertha, who Shapiro says, was mistaken for the nanny or housekeeper at times, believed Shapiro's racial ambiguity was a positive. And she actually loved the fact that I was this, this mutt, said Shapiro who is the mother of two, she would say to me, you either break every rule or you fill every quota, she said. You are a walking United Nation. She continued, and I truly think that, you know, she was proud. She was proud to be the parent of somebody that couldn't be easily identified because she herself had been so stereotyped and so pigeonholed because of her skin color, obviously. I am to the other extreme sometimes, you know criticized because I'm not black enough and I can't help the way that I was born. Eartha King Net Worth Net Worth estimated to have a net worth of $4 million as of 2008 when she died. Merrill Brook House Merrill Brook House is full of unique character, history, and old world charm. Former home to this legendary international singer, actress, and cabaret star Eartha Kitt, Merrill Brook House is a secluded location, offering total privacy and exclusivity, yet just seven miles from the city of Canterbury. The five acres of landscaped gardens, adocks, and woodland provide the perfect setting for a quintessential English country wedding. Another house owned by Eartha Kitt is 1230 La Colina. 1230 La Colina, designed in the 1920s, and once owned by legendary singer and performer Eartha Kitt, is a single-story residence of approximately 4,592 square feet. It has a pool, outdoor fireplace, terrace patio, multiple outdoor seating areas and lawns, plus mature landscaping with fruit trees. Deck overlooks the pool and backyard, and there is also a center courtyard foyer area. A separate one-bedroom guest cottage has a kitchenette and its own grassy yard. After making First Lady Cry, Eartha Kitt detailed how CIA reportedly tried to destroy her. The CIA inquiry into Miss Kitt's affairs commenced in the late 1960s, sparked by her outspoken remarks during the White House gathering in 1968, an event that left Mrs. L- Lyndon B. Johnson visibly distressed. Eartha Kitt's fiery condemnation of the Vietnam War and its impact on American youth reverberated through the room. Through the room, leaving her fellow guests in uneasy silence. In a report published by the New York Times, it was recounted how Miss Kitt's impassioned speech laid bare the anguish of sending young Americans to war while neglecting their needs at home. She pointedly criticized the administration's priorities accusing it of sacrificing the nation's youth on foreign battlegrounds while neglecting pressing issues such as urban crime, education, and health care. Mrs. Johnson, visibly moved and tearful, responded with a plea for understanding, emphasizing the need for simultaneous efforts to address social issues amidst the ongoing conflict. Despite a brief apology from Mrs. Kitt during the subsequent Q&A session, Tensions persisted, exaggerated by the ridicule she faced from a governor's wife present at the event. In her apology, Miss Kitt acknowledged the potential offense caused to the president and his wife, but affirmed her commitment to speaking truthfully from her heart. She highlighted her own background, drawing attention to the harsh realities she had experienced firsthand. Mrs. Jolta's response reflected a mixture of incomprehension and acknowledgement. An acknowledgement, conceding her own limitations in understanding the depth of Mrs. Kitt's perspective, while expressing hope for continued progress in addressing societal challenges. Eartha didn't hesitate to confront Mrs. Johnson once more, her words piercing the room as she addressed the transfixed guests. 
With a pointed finger, she emphasized that the youth of America were not rebelling without a cause, challenging the notion that they were mere aimless hippies. She spoke of the underlying grievances simmering within the country, especially among mothers who feared sending their sons off to war, a sentiment Mrs. Johnson could surely understand as a mother herself. Describing the disillusionment of today's youth, Eartha highlighted their belief that being a good guy held very little value when faced with the prospect of war and uncertainty. Instead, many preferred the perceived safety of a rebellious lifestyle, even if it had been facing consequences like imprisonment or dodging the draft. Eartha's boldness in expressing her thoughts, particularly as an African-American woman during such a turbulent era, earned her respect. However, the fallout from her confrontation at the White House took a toll on her career. With nightclub owners and producers fearing association with her and abruptly ending their contracts. Despite the financial repercussions, Eartha remained steadfast in her convictions, refusing to retreat from her outspoken stance. Reflecting on her past adherence to the notion that entertainers should stay out of politics, she acknowledged the importance of using her platform to shed light on social issues. For her, the responsibility to speak out stem from her own experiences of poverty and hardship, a stark contrast to the privileged lives of many in positions of power. After struggling to secure gigs in America, Eartha Kitt turned her performing in Europe. However, upon her return to the United States in 1975, she was shocked to discover that the CIA had allegedly been actively undermining her career and tarnishing her reputation. The agency reportedly began investigating her in 1968, following her outspoken remarks at the White House, at the behest of the Secret Service. Outraged by these revelations, Eartha didn't hold back in condemning the CIA's actions to the media. She expressed her determination to resist the erosion of American freedom and warned of the dire consequences if such abuses of power were allowed to continue uncheckered. Referring to the CIA's intrusion into her privacy, she voiced her indignation, disappointment, and annoyance. Though she admitted she wasn't entirely surprised given the hardships she had faced since 1968. Reflecting on the aftermath of her White House speech, Eartha lamented the cancellation of numerous nightclub and hotel engagements, despite having entered into contracts. She saw herself as a victim of racial prejudice, believing that her status as a black woman made her a target for retribution and suppression. Despite inaccurate information spread about her, such as claims that she did not associate with other black individuals, Eartha highlighted her long-standing involvement in the support for the black community. Despite the financial toll and professional setbacks she endured, Eartha remained resolute in her convictions. She expressed pity and sympathy for those who compromised their morals to align with the administrations of Johnson and Nixon contrasting their actions with her own steadfast commitment to speaking out against injustice. Eartha Kitt's unwavering courage and advocacy for justice deserve to be remembered alongside other historical figures who fought for the greater good, regardless of the personal sacrifices or damage to their careers. She died of colon cancer on Christmas Day 2008, three weeks shy of her 82nd birthday, at her home in Weston, Connecticut.